Every trip I use is a learning experience. Yeah, there you go, Betty. I remember seeing sturgeon when I was a kid. Somebody back home would ask me, well, what's a sturgeon like? Uh, bring it around here. The term prehistoric probably gets used a lot for other fish. Look at that, dude. Once I think you get one of these sturgeon in your hands, you start to really understand what prehistoric means. You know, Ali's fish was impressive. I couldn't come all the way out here and let him one-up me. Rush, get, get, get rush, come on. What's that? My name is Ali Husseini. I grew up in Southern California and now operate one of the largest sport fishing websites in the Just world. Just another day at the office. My office, not yours. <laughs> I'm Rush Maltz. I got you, what you saying? Florida Keys native and career fishing guide for the past 20 years. Fish, when I come out to California, you can let me catch all the three on the pontoon. Our passion is our profession, and we know there's more to fishing than just the catch. There's a good mark right there. That's what I like to see. That's the one. He's not superstitious, because that's bad luck. Woo. All right, get with him. Come with him. We explore the people, places, and species that make up the culture of fishing. Being a fisherman and fishing in one area, one zone for too long, you become you know, very one dimensional. Since we started Local Knowledge, I've got to travel to so many different places and see so many different techniques and so many different fishermen and so many different fisheries. It's really opened a whole nother realm for me in the fishing industry. When most people hear about San Francisco, I think you think of a few things, right? Trolley cars, Golden Gate Bridge, sourdough bread, probably clam chowder. Well, there's a whole nother side to that coin if you're a sportsman. Good morning. Good morning, hey. guys. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Good to see you. What's up, buddy? You ready to do this? I remember seeing sturgeon when I was a kid, you know, Western Outdoor News and kind of reading about them. And I think as soon as you see a picture, you kind of know they're not like other fish. I Take love him. this boat, man. For me, sturgeon fishing was totally foreign. They're coming up the river right now to spawn, so it's a good chance to catch a lot of really big fish right now. You know? And I've never really had the perfect opportunity lined up to chase these fish until now. Is that any rods, reels in particular you want to set up? What do you recommend? Um, I think Ollie and I were talking, we want to go eight, eight con all conventional, okay. eight and then, uh, or was it, yeah, eight and two or six and four, however you want to do it. I like to use my own gear. I'm a geek at heart. I like to make my stuff my way. I like to have my boat rigged my way. I like my stuff right where it belongs. I need my rod holders here. I need all that stuff. Go with the lighter ones first, and whatever we have left that we could do a few heavier. We're somewhere. gonna do them all. We're gonna do that whole. You know, there's really something to be said about coming out and jumping on somebody's boat, going fishing with them and seeing their program, you know. But for us, we like to be on our own boat. We like to take our boat places. Like when we get the gear out, we'll set up a good spread, and then when we hook up, we're not really in anything. You know, we're gonna have to use some skill and weave them through. And when you go to a new fishery, you find some pros like Zach and a guy who's been doing this for years. And hey, dude, how do we get my program to interlace with your program? You got some gifts, so we're not gonna snap on the hooks at, right? right? But we're trying to penetrate that really hard mouth, you know. Right. I've only been to one bayou before in my life, and that's Louisiana. If you've traveled and fished, you know, one of the best places to fish, I think, in North or South America is Louisiana. And, you know, I'd heard it before that the Delta was sort of California's version of it. San Francisco Delta, is our, it's our largest wetland that we have here. It sort of looks like a cross between, like, Louisiana and the hills of Ireland type of thing. It's a very unique backdrop, and you're fishing in a river, which is something me and Rush never do. Yeah, like when the tide's starting or when it's dying. Sometimes we'll put a, a big drift sock out, but. Much like any kind of fishing, you need conditions to catch fish. Otherwise, you're just running around chasing your tail. And in this case, fishing in a river, the conditions are really the current. It all starts about preparation in the morning. Sure, we're looking at tides and we're trying to see what areas we could hit. We want just the right amount of current to bring our scent to this sturgeon. Sturgeon is basically a bloodhound with fins. They pull it in their mouth and they got like this big tongue that's kind of a, like a mallet, man. They crushed up, you know, so they eat mostly clams. One of the things that really impressed me right off the bat about the way that Zach fishes, he's not just running out there and trying to hook a fish. It almost reminded me of like what, what I do when I get to the bluefin grounds with these big bluefin we've been catching. 
I get there, I kind of start at a spot, and then I go hunting, look around, find those meter marks, kind of put together a, a bit of a game plan, you know, and dude, we checked five spots before we put a line in the water. That's my kind of fishing. If it's flicking, it's in his mouth, you know, just as soon as you see that thing flick, get to the rod and just put the wood to him. Zach used a term, the sturgeon roadblock, which I thought was really cool because it does describe how these guys fish. I mean, they're basically, you know, here's your point of their boat. You're coming to anchor, the boat's sitting there. They're throwing out a line basically in 180 degrees on every hour on the hour if you were looking at the clock. Basically, if there's a sturgeon swimming up that current, he is gonna run into one of your baits and he's gonna find it and hopefully you're gonna get a bite. It's coming up, it's coming up, it's coming up! Oh yeah! yeah. Local Knowledge is brought to you by Evinroot, fastest, cleanest, smartest, the only outboard that lets you have it all. Pen, let the battle begin. Yeti, built for the wild. Sea Keeper, once you feel it, you will never boat without it. The Florida Keys and Key West, come as you are. Bubba, the ultimate lifestyle. Nomad Design, Crafted by experience and by BDOutdoors.com. Now, do they always streak right up and jump? <laughs> Almost every one of them? No, not no. always. You know, one of the most impressive things about these fish are the fight. It's a freshwater fish, it's a big fish, but the one thing that did blow me away is these fish are bulldogs. You need help passing that, Virginia? You got it? I got it. Oh, is that tangled in it? Yep. I totally feel like certain fish have a sixth sense. That sixth sense is they're fighting for their life, basically. They don't know what's going on. So now you backed off the drag a little bit, right? Deep into the fight. I gotta go over the top of you. <laughs> it's a dance. I feel like a lot of fish tend to run for a wreck or run for the anchor line. Something they can cut that line on that's pulling them, you know, and break off. Here they come. That's a good oh, one. Oh, that's cool. <laughs> Let's trade jobs. I'll do it. You got it, Virginia? Yeah. All right. You want to grab me over here? Let's walk them down a little bit. Sturgeon are really awesome fish. I mean, you think about something that could start off just, I mean, just to a little tiny fry, you know, live a hundred years. Sweet. Look at that thing, Rush. Oh, so you can just straight lip him, huh? Mm -hmm. wow. Term prehistoric probably gets used a lot for other fish. Once I think you get one of these sturgeon in your hands, you start to really understand what prehistoric means. And so these ones on the side are just as sharp? Yeah, so if you go this way, it's really smooth. Oh, I gotcha. But if you go the other way, yeah, gnar. Yeah, you can see it. So is that How a dark slot it is. fish? Or? Oh, yeah. oh yeah, it's a slot. What do you mean by slot fish? It's a, if you wanted to harvest a fish, uh, this was actually a legal fish to partake. We are a catch and release charter, but I made a personal decision to fish catch and release for white sturgeon. And it's based on, you know, 50 years of living and fishing out here in this area. And I just want to see the population just grow and get better and better. There he's there, he's pull there, up, pull there. Pull up, pull up, pull up. Ah, there you go, Betty. Yeah. Oh, woo! Oh, it's an awesome area. There you go. In the case here in the Delta, you got 10 lines out. Let's go ahead and get this guy yeah. back oh, yeah. in the There's water. Something there, well, we got a yep. double one. Definitely something. Uh, now I feel. Yep. You always want to leave some lines out there for the possibility of doubling up. Okay, I'm going to go underneath you. Back up. Okay. You want me to back off the drag? Oh, there you go. You got him. Yeah, like any good fisherman, you know, these guys want to stay in the game as much as they can. And the best way to do that when you're fishing 10 rods and you get bit is to leave nine more in the holders. We got Little there, guy. Right? Little sturgeon. These are a nice manageable size, actually. Take in the boat and get a good look at. They're so weird looking. Oh, I mean, it's a straight Brother. dinosaur. Right? I mean, we talk about the Kobe and stuff being prehistoric. No. This is prehistoric. They're dated back over 345 million years ago, back to the Jurassic period. Really? Yes. That is a fish that time forgot. Oh, yeah. Somebody back home were to ask me, well, what's a sturgeon like? Looking at it, it's somewhere between a mix between a cobia, a tarpon, and a catfish. 
They're the closest relative to sharks. That's not hard to imagine. And with no teeth. No teeth. This is a good one. Go ahead and pull that mouth open, Rush, and get a good look back in there. You can see that tongue where you can crush things. Oh, yeah. Yeah, they're ridiculously efficient. And you'll notice when you look at different ones, they have different patterns on the head. I mean, just completely different looks. Let's go ahead and let them go. Local knowledge. Yeah. Just like that. That's cool, man. Thank you. Yeah. Does it happen like that a lot? You're fighting one, you get another yeah. bite? Yeah, yeah that's why we leave yeah, the gear started, in the water. Started, you started to chum them in. And... Yeah. yeah as far as bait goes, this is totally different to Ollie and me. You know, normally when I think of bait, I like to look at that aquarium window on the back of my CV. But in this case, you know, we weren't looking at live bait in the fish tank. It was really different. Um, as far as the bait goes, the bait that I like to use a lot, I like to use salmon roe, and I was taught how to prepare it by a man named Rich Tipton, the late Rich Tipton. On his deathbed, literally, we talked. He taught me how to do it, and he had me write it down step by step, and he said, if you teach anyone how to do that, I'll come back and haunt you. So it was very, very impactful coming from him. Despite asking Zach four or five times, you know, what makes these baits so special, he was always like, is that a rabbit? Oh, look, there's a fish jumping. Hey, Zach, but what's in the, oh, look, is that an eagle? He was a little dodgy on that topic for sure. You know, I ran into Virginia, shoot, I wanna say three or four years ago to Fred Hall show. She is nuts for fishing, super excited, really good ambassador. And from the minute we connected, you gotta come catch a sturgeon. You gotta come catch a sturgeon. There's definitely tide here. So I'm the deckhand of gate crasher. Do you want both buckets or just one? There are so many things that are incredible about sturgeon. I think I fell in love with the fight and then the more I learned about them and and about how they reproduce and how they travel. I just fell more and more in love with them and made me just want to dive deeper into learning more about them. We've caught them over 100 inches out here. I mean, really big fish, and, and they're just so cool. Go, 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 the other unique thing about having all these lines out, you got a lot of obstacles to overcome. What you got there, buddy? I think it's a tuna, but I'm not sure. <laughs> the way they fish these sturgeon, you're fighting it from a dead boat. You have to work around the anchor, the motors, everything. You starting to dig, Ollie? No, I thought it on the anchor. <laughs> oh God, who whacks this thing? <laughs> so it was a bit of a challenge once you hooked a fish, Rush, yes, sir. start the boat and just come up about six or eight feet. Do you want to roll up all the lines? No. You watch the gear back there. I think we can get it without him moving the boat. I remember a black tip that did this to us one time. And these fish really want to hug the bottom. I mean, so if you're straight up and down right under the boat with this fish, I mean, you got an awkward angle. Just keep it out wide. Watch out, boards. How many ways to be worked by a sturgeon? <laughs> Dude, seriously. Nailed it's definitely it. not small. Yeah. I can tell by the way you're fighting. Had to be suicidal. Here he is. Oh, nice beauty. Yeah, he's, beauty. Not, he's not small. Where uh, do you want me to walk him to? Uh, bring him around here. Come around to the left. Go with the fish. Holy moly, you did it all. That is a good one. Yeah, you did. Holy. Sturgeon are just an incredibly unique fish. As a fisherman, it's got to be on your bucket list, man. Look at that, dude. Oh. <sighs> That's a good, good fish one. right there. <laughs> That's a good one. Huh? Good job, man. Good job, good job Ollie. Nice work. <laughs> oh, yeah. Look at Heck that yeah. SOB. Bam. <laughs> so I'm totally blown away by this fish. What a dinosaur, what? huh? Dude, the tail is just I mean, crazy. We've caught some fish. Not no, one like this. None that look like this. This is the weirdest tail fish Don't let them go. <laughs> I've ever had my hands on. I've been wanting to do this since I was a kid. Really? No joke, man. I've uh, always we're... thought these were so cool. I can't believe we're doing it. Kind of reminds me of an alligator crossed with a fish, crossed with I don't even know what an alien. It's just so unique and so cool. And it was, it was great to finally get up here and, you know, lay hands on one. Later, dude. Yeah. Nice. That was awesome. <laughs> you did it, man. That was awesome. Hey, that was awesome. Find me. You know, Ali's fish was impressive. I mean, it was a nice fish. I couldn't come all the way out here and let him one up me.
Local Knowledge is brought to you by CV Boats. Lead the way. Costa. See what's out there. Mustad. The standard in saltwater. Aftco. Any fish, any water. Sea Deck. Your boat deserves Sea Deck. JL Audio. How we play. Casa Vieja Lodge. Experience five-star angling in tropical Guatemala. The Saltwater Angler, Key West. And by Taco Marine. This isn't one of those fisheries where you just sit back and watch your bobber. I mean, you got 12 rods out, which means you got 12 rods with baits on them. Rush, get it, get Rush, come on. Run. What's the them? Zach and Virginia were pretty adamant. You know, when we see the bite, you got to get on the rod quick. Yeah, he's on there. He's got him. Right. Fun. Do you want to clear these rods? It's a good one, Rush. Swing him around this it way. Feels a right. heavy. He's good. <sighs> he's not. It feels like a big nurse shark. Or sandbar. Do you have nurse sharks here? No. <laughs> okay, good. Because if there is one nearby, we'll find it. There's no nurse shark. Zach and Virginia were very good at giving us instructions on how these fish were gonna eat and how to set up on them. What do you think, Rush? You like that one? Fighting like a rat? Like it's wrapped. <laughs> oh, that's what it feels like, like it's wrapped. Mm -hmm. You feel the body on the line, Rush? No, negative. Okay. To me, the fight was very similar to a shark. Big old mud donkey. Feel like he's gonna pop up and just show himself like Jaws did. Do you want to put another barrel on him? Yeah. <laughs> I'm going to come this way, guys. He's trying to get that angle under no. the anchor. I'm good. I'm good. All right. My fish in particular, that fish took me under the anchor line, I don't know, four, five, six times. Better? Ooh, he, now he knows he's hooked. It knew that anchor line was there, and it wanted to try and break me off on that anchor line. Like oh, wow. Crap. That's the fish right there. Yeah. There's just a big fight that they put on. You know, there's three stages of it. The more pressure you put, the yeah, more pissed yeah. off it gets. You usually you'll have them come up, and they, they don't quite realize they've been stuck right away, and then phew, off like a shot. <laughs> <laughs> Nope. Yeah. <laughs> Sturgeon gymnastics. Do they like try and break you off on the anchor? <laughs> yeah. Well, it, it didn't get that big by being stupid. Yeah. Just something everybody should experience. I mean, all different types of fish have different nuances and things like that. Yeah, nice and low. Oh, look at them. There's their, bu their bubbles coming up. All right. Yeah. Does that mean close? Yeah. Yeah. Means yeah. Close. Here it comes. Oh, it's coming, it's coming. Color, color. It's big. This water is not very clear. So when you finally lay eyes on the fish, it's literally right there. Whoa! Whoa. That's a guppy. <laughs> Who's gonna grab that one? That's a dandy. <laughs> that is a dandy. Nice, dude, nice. Damn, they whooped my butt. <laughs> to lay eyes on this, it, it's an impressive fish. Don't put any pressure on that door. Yep. And then can I get back there and help you, Zach? Nope. Straight up and in, Zach, when we, if you can get her. Straight up and in. Get her behind the boat. Handling the fish was a little different. It's just this massive muscle that you're constantly fighting. <laughs> <laughs> Look at that thing. Nice work. Oh, oh, holy cow. I got it. Smokes. That one will go 100. That one will go close to 200, I bet. I mean, you got it in the boat, and you can just feel the denseness. It's just this big mass of dense muscle. Look what you caught. <laughs> it's Godzilla. Might be older than Godzilla. Look at the head compared to my hand. That's crazy. I mean, you ever think you'd see a fish like this? And I mean, look, look, there's a shore right there. Yeah, no doubt. A duck club. US, Your children aren't safe here. Oh, my God. Oh, got me right in the lip. We really wanted to get a good fish for film, and we ended up doing it. What a absolute monster. I mean, that is so cool. It's built for armor. I mean, this is like, this is the armored truck of the fish world. Well, it makes you wonder, what did they used to have to protect themselves against? Jaws, mostly. Megalodon. Uh, Megalodon. <laughs> I mean, that'd be a nice snack for Megalodon. Every trip I use is a learning experience. It's a chance for me to get out, experience new things, meet new people, different cultures. You know, that's what this show's about. It's about the culture of fishing. All right, let's let this big girl go. One, two, three. Yeah. Excellent. Woo-hoo! 
<laughs> this was another case, you know, where it was cool to kind of show Rush something that wasn't on his radar, but I don't think he had any idea even existed until I told him about it. Some I've been wanting to do. An awesome animal, I'm That's so sweet. prehistoric, and it's just nothing I've ever seen. There's nothing that compares to it back home. I mean, yeah. you know, I just get to see these awesome places and meet people like you guys. It's just it's like a dream come true. Some I've been wanting to do, you know, and it's always awesome to take somebody who has no preconceived notions. You know, we teamed up on this one. I think we both had a great time. This is definitely something, you know, you can see us doing again.